Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and for you Godot developers, I've got some great news for you. Godot 3.5 is here. Now I know a lot of you are waiting for Godot 4, pun not intended. Uh, it should be uh, coming in beta just about any day now, but 3.5 has been getting a ton of Godot 4's features, and today I'm going to look at two of the features of Godot 3.5 that have me the most impressed, and I'm going to show you them right now. Now the first one looks really small, but actually I find this would be really, really quite useful, and it's a new node called Label. 3D. And basically, this enables you to create billboarded text super easily in your 3D scene. Uh, literally, just drop one into the scene like so, uh, and go down here to the text properties and set the text. Hello, world. And there you see it right there. You can change it, the pixel size over here, by the way. So it goes 0 0.05 and you have a substantially larger. Now you're gonna see the, the aliasing on that is a little on the iffy side. I'm not sure if that can be fixed or not, uh, but there is no actual font defined to this one either, so if you wanted to bring in a font, it would probably end up looking a bit better. What I'm going to do instead is put it back to its default pixel size, grab my camera instead, get out of preview mode, and let us move the camera, all right, camera, you, a little bit closer to the text. All right, so that will look a little bit better on the whole. All right, there we go. So let's go back here. So again, really straightforward. Literally, you could just drop text into the 3D world. It sets up as a billboard, so no matter where your camera goes or is orientated, it will always be straight on. It's great for putting like labels over top of your player character and that kind of thing. It's a very small change, but I actually really like this one. But the next up is the most profound new change, and that is going to change the way that you write code. It's also going to potentially introduce the world of spaghetti code like you've never seen before. But what you can now do is you can pick any node in Godot you can right click on it and I can go down and say percent access as seen unique name uh, we can turn that one on and what that now means you'll see it's marked here which is nice because again this is one of those things where you could get name collisions out of it. I don't actually know how it will resolve a name collision uh, but it can cause some issues but what this allows us to do is it will now treat label 3d which give this guy a bit of a better name we'll call this uh, uh, let's go here we'll call this my text. All right, so my text now can be accessed via a unique name. So what I can do now, I'll go to my script here, and on load, I will change this to, all right, so now I'm gonna do git node. So before what we'd have to do is basically path in, pa pass in the path to that node. What I can now do is pass in percentile and then the unique node name, which uh, obviously needs to be unique. So go ahead like that, and I'm gonna do a set underscore text like so, and I'll change it to goodbye cruel world. All right, so right now, again, 3D, hello world, and now we're gonna go ahead and run our code, and goodbye cruel world. And yeah, that's that's how you can now access No, So why would you want to do this? Well, that means I can start moving this guy around without problems. So before, if I access this guy by path, it was like slash spatial slash, so basically root slash my text. But what if I happen and remove my text and parent it to camera? Well, that would cause me previously, I would have to go in and change my script. And now I'd have to go slash camera slash my text. Well, with this one, it is a globally located object. So if I go ahead and run this, Ta-da! It still works. So this is the new ability. You basically uh, have anything available as a unique scene name and then reference it by that name. And I don't know if it's a best practice from a code perspective, but wow, is it going to make a lot of things easier in life. You don't, if, especially if something that you're prototyping, you're moving it around in the scene graph, you don't know where it's going to be. You don't want to keep changing it. Hey, just make it this one global unique. But again, this is also a potential code smell. So one of those things definitely want to be aware of and don't use and abuse, but I definitely like it. And it's going to change the way that I work with Godot, especially for like small throwaway examples. It just makes life so much easier. So you now you can give any node a unique name and access it that way. Definitely something that I like, but there's a bunch more to Godot 3.5 and then 3D text and the ability to set um, unique nodes. So let's go take a look at the release notes. By the way, I did the download via this link and I got the old version. Also, for some reason, if you're in North America and you down good, download Godot from their website, uh, it took like four minutes to download like 40 megabytes. Uh, download it off of the GitHub link. I'll show you how to do that. By the way, you can also check out the web editor uh, via this link so you can upload a project into the cloud and use Godot basically in the browser. So uh, what is new in 3.5? Well, we have the nav server with obstacle avoidance. I do believe this was a back, yeah, this is a back port as well. Um, so we've kind of gotten new features here. You now use the RVO2 library for uh, determining pathing in the world. So this is basically how you would add 3D pathfinding into your world. 
Uh, so that is a Godot 4 feature that was backported back. Uh, we also have physics interpolation in 3D. Interpolation is basically, um, let's say I move something, uh, you know, two pixels in one frame and then seven pixels three frames later, but in the intermediate frames, it doesn't know what to do, so it could jerk from the one location to the other location. Well, interpolation basically smooths out the movements over time. Well, it can now be applied on physics as well. It's gonna basically cut down on some of the jittering or twerking you're gonna see, twerking, not twerking, some of the, the or the twitching you're gonna see in physics or, or twerking, depending on guess what kind of game you're creating. Um, we also have better scene tweening. Uh, so uh, scene tree tweening, is uh, tweening is, is kind of the same thing. It's literally a short form for the word in between. Uh, so you could give it basically a value, say this thing is here. I want this thing to be there. Now each frame or each update in between, give me like the amount we need to move by. That's basically the process of tweening. Um, so uh, this is a new overhauled tweening class. It was backported to 3.5. So again, you're gonna see a lot of this stuff basically is Godot 4 features that they managed to make work with Godot 3.5, which is nice to see. So even if you're waiting for Godot 4, a lot of the features you can use in the interim, or if you're not moving to Godot 4, well, they're available to you. We also have a time singleton. A singleton is a single unique globally available object inside of the Godot engine. Uh, the time singleton provides a better abstraction of various ways of reading the current time. Uh, this was a 4.0 feature feature that was backported to 3.5, you will find you access time quite a bit. So that is definitely an improvement. We also have the label 3D. I showed you this in action. Uh, you can also use text mesh uh, to generate 3D meshes. So what we were looking at was a billboard that basically played, stood over the player's head, like what you see here. Um, you could also create a 3D text uh, using the, the other option here, the text mesh, but we saw label 3D in action. We also saw the ability to access nodes by unique names. Again, you right click it, uh, which I don't think there's actually any description here uh, that you need to do that. Basically, you right-click the node, make it unique, and then you can access it anywhere. Uh, oh, I guess it's in the animated image. Okay, and now uh, it makes it movable. We saw that one in action earlier. Uh, we got new flow containers, uh, H flow and V flow. Uh, range child controls vertically or horizontally in a left, right, or top to bottom flow. Uh, definitely useful again if you're creating a UI. Asynchronous shader compilation and caching. This is the Uber shader. Now, the entire idea behind the Uber shader is basically when Godot first loads, uh, it's a giant shader with all possible conditions in it uh, so that your. Um, your shaders, they're gonna have a little bit of a hitch the first time they're used while the actual shader itself is compiling, uh, but it's gonna really slow down that initial hitch. So basically it's an optimization trick so that your game can get up and running with shaders immediately while the real shaders are compiling in the background. So that is what that one's all about. We got Occluder Shape Polygon 3D. I believe this was also another backport for, um, Occlusion culling is basically drawing only what you need. Occlusion, you, what you're occluding is the geometry that you don't need to render in your scene. Um, this is another control over defining the areas to occlude from drawing. Uh, the Android editor is also an option out there. By the way, Godot runs on Android. I did a video about that in the past. That is very cool also. It's still experimental, by the way. Uh, material overlay property was added to mesh instance. This is both 3.5 and 4 simultaneous. So this isn't technically a backport. This is a new feature for both versions. Um, so you can see here is the same material applied to our dear enemy with three different locations. There the next pass material override and the material overlay uh, gives you new effects on the rendering side of things. We've got a number of different rendering changes here. Uh, the um, control, the version control uh, integration UI got a bunch of upgrades. This came from originally like a Google Summer of Code 2020 project. Uh, definitely nice to see more source code or so, um, not source code, but version control source um, access control options there as well. And then a number of other improvements. Uh, there are a couple of known issues. So flicker on some materials when, Shinder, when the uh, Uber shader is being used and bullet kinematic body uh, fails to return kinematic collision with small velocities. So those are being worked on. Uh, if there are other issues, let them know, which by the way, there is also the uh, GitHub version of this. So if you wanna build it from source, the daily version, you can grab it here. The reason why I'm showing you the GitHub page today is because of this guy. So if you are like me and getting really slow down Download speeds, go and download this version. It will work so much better. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Godot 3.5. Uh, what do you think of that new global unique variable name? Do you think it's a good thing or do you think it's gonna lead to some really terrible spaghetti code? I can see arguments both ways, but I'd love to hear what your opinion is. So that's Godot 3.5. Let me know what you think. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.